Hello, Pod Smashers of the Internet, and welcome to another 80 bit newscast! We're back! We took a two week hiatus! Here we are! Hiatus, yeah, because of this one's work, um, so, uh, which is totally understandable. No hard feelings whatsoever. Hopefully, you guys showed us some grace in that time period and uh but we're back with the news and there's been so much has been happening Whew. we're gonna only be able to cover a little bit because you know there's it's it we'd be here for like hours if we had to cover everything mm-hmm. um so we're gonna cover some of the stuff that's most important to us over the last week or so um so if we missed a news story something uh that we're not on top of apologies um, but we're probably not going to catch up on it because it's going to be a whirlwind of news from here on out for the next month or so. <laughs> so E3 is uh, a but, plus. Exactly. But, um, but yes, we are 80-bit newscast, and we're going to be going through some of these stories that we care about, and um, hopefully uh, we'll be giving our thoughts and opinions on each one uh, so that, you know, if you disagree with it, then sorry, it's our opinion, and we're if forthcoming you dis- about if you disagree that. disagree with it, Hit us up in chat and tell us. Oh, yes. If we are factually wrong, though, then also tell us because we don't want like, to be factually wrong. So, um, so uh, save your comments and stuff. Well, don't save your comments. Put them in the chat. We'll refer to them, but we're going to be blasting through these news stories. So um, we won't really get to them to the end. So if you're watching later on YouTube, then there's all kinds of places where you can give your feedback. And we'll talk about that at the end as well. Is there anything else we need to talk about? We have a podcast. We do have a weekly video game podcast that goes live. We mentioned E3, and the episode that just went live today is our E3 pre-show hype. Despite the fact that we missed the new show for two weeks, we have not missed a single show of our podcast for almost four years straight, and I continue to keep that streak running, and it will always go. So as so, it went this morning, E3 2021, Mm -hmm. all of our hype predictions and everything cool going on in the industry. Uh, Make sure you hit that up. You can go to 80bitpodsmash.com. That's our landing website where there are links to all of our podcast platforms as well as our, as well as our social media outlets where you can interact with us. And you can hit us up. We just got someone in chat. This is awesome. If you are, again, watching live on twitch.tv, uh, thank you for being here. Throw us our comments in chat. We'll address them at the end of the show. And if you're not and you're on YouTube, you can go over to twitch.tv slash 80bitpodsmash and subscribe to us there so you can be made aware of when we go live every Monday and Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. One quick comment about the episode that just went live. I was really worried when we recorded that ahead of time that, you know, there were going to be things that happened in the course of the two weeks that made me wish that we had, you know, recorded it closer to the event alive. Yeah. How do you feel uh, Because now? I thought I was going to have new takes and new thoughts and things. Um, I, honestly, I feel like our predictions so far, so far of things that have been leaked and hinted at, <laughs> I think we're pretty on the money so yep. far. I have nothing, nothing notable to add in regards to what I expect to be talked about at E3. So Nailed it. Exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully we'll see how right we are. We still don't know quite yet, but things are looking promising for a lot of those things we predicted. So absolutely, um, word. All right. Um, sh- well, so we're gonna be talking about a bunch of news stories today, um, and I will go through some of the headlines. Uh, we're gonna be talking about. Uh, oh, so there were some release dates on announced games for Pokemon that we had previously talked about. Now they have dates attached to them. Uh, there were some, again, referring to that E3 hype episode, we predicted a certain thing about Nintendo hardware, and it looks like there are some leaks that indicate that we may have been right about that. There was a Sonic Central stream announcing a whole boatload of Sonic things. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, some news came out of that. Um, actually, there's some new stuff today that I may see if I can grab a link to um, that also came out about Cyberpunk 2077, so we can talk about that, nice. all that. Very nice. Uh, there was a PlayStation State of Play for casting forecasting showing off some uh, gameplay of a game that we're both very excited about so we were stoked on that and then also some far cry 6 news and information so um well, i'll let you kick it off and i'll see if i can find an article on that cyberpunk thing that's sweet this. nintendo revealed a couple days ago the release dates for pokemon legends arceus pokemon brilliant diamond and pokemon shining pearl i'm actually going to read the blurb right from nintendo.com's news site Today, the Pokemon Company International and Nintendo announced new details for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Pokemon Shining Pearl, and Pokemon Legends Arceus games, as well as a new feature on updates for Pokemon Home. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl will launch on November 19th, 2021, and Pokemon Legends Arceus will launch on January 28th, 2022. It's very early. I did not anticipate that. All three games will be available exclusively on Nintendo Switch 
systems. And I want to know about the Pokemon Home updates. So uh, there's nothing. Well, systems that... include systems include light. the light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just thought it was funny. Don't get too excited. Just throwing that out there. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about Pokemon Home. In a new update, users will be introduced to the Catch Calendar. This feature enables users to view their Pokemon arranged by the dates on which they caught them. Trainers can use this feature to relive memories from their adventures, such as the day they first caught a certain Pokemon or the day of an event or other occasion when they received a Pokemon as a gift. This update also introduces the ability to view Pokemon registered to the Pokedex in Pokemon Home from different angles, such as above or behind. Trainers can try this out to get a better look at their Pokemon. So... I would have killed for this when I was in middle school, by the way. I'd right. be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'd have, I'd have flipped out. So there you have the it. Pokemon. Nice. Nice. Yep. Uh, anything weird or interesting to you about the November 19th release date for the remakes and January 28th for RCS? I, I kind of predicted that RCS would be a 2022 title. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I like verbally predicted it, but in my <clears> head, <throat> I've just been thinking about it as not this year. Um uh, the the remakes though they make plenty of sense to come out this year. Um, nothing stands out other than November, uh, Christmas getting them Christmas sales, Pokemon Christmas sales. That sounds great for. That sounds like a great time to release a Pokemon game. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a great time to play a Pokemon game. I might have to reconsider. I oh. wasn't planning on playing. Uh, Diamond and Pearl are so good, dude. Diamond oh, and Pearl. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't wait. I was really surprised by how fast Arceus is coming out. Like January is very early in 2022, mm-hmm. and we just got that announced like a few months ago. So it's yeah, like from announcement yeah. to release date is only, a, what, six months? Yeah, Maybe. but Nintendo has been doing that recently. Nintendo has really been like, we're not even going to announce it until we're, we're like ready to show it off and pretty much ready to release it. The only exception to that being all the things we talked about in our E3 hype episode. I guess I can't say that. Lately, they've been more like, you know, um, trying to release things, you know, after they've, you know. Like Smash was that way. Smash, mm-hmm. the, 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 Smash was announced and then came out like six months later, yeah. which was great and awesome. And they, they they really were able to build the hype and marketing in that short window. Everyone um, is so here. Not... Right, 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 right. So th- that's a notable example of it happening. Mm-hmm. A notable exception is Breath of the Wild 2 being yeah, right. yeah, stuck forever. in development. But for, Pokemon forever, Sword yeah. and Shield came out in November of 2019. So this is like mm-hmm. a two-year and a few-month turnaround yeah, on a Pokemon brand team, new, yeah. entirely like crazy direction that's in totally different. so. Pokemon Company is just firing on all cylinders over there, cranking out stuff. I guess so. I Getting guess it so. done. Getting it done. Cool. Yeah. Word. All right. Next story. Uh, some Switch Pro leaks. So, uh, a Not better, really. newer uh, Switch uh, that again that's been rumored for forever. Um, there seem to be some leaks that. Uh, corroborate basically everything we've been hearing about an OLED screen and 4K dock, uh, docking capabilities. Um, so, what's the news on that, Termite? Sure. Comes from over at Tom's Guide, which is the only website I could find, which we don't cite often, uh, written by Denise Primbet. Everything we know about the possible Nintendo Switch Pro, and they're just calling it that because the PlayStation 4 Pro, right? That's just right, right. a half-step system. So it's looking very likely that Nintendo Switch Pro will release sometime this year. What have been years of rumors have turned into sourced reports. Now we're looking at a potential Nintendo Switch Pro capable of 4K graphics and a slick OLED display. With the recent release of PS5, Xbox Series X, and S, the Nintendo Switch Pro will be more in line with next-gen graphics, but given the COVID-19 pandemic, there might be supply shortages as well. According to Bloomberg, the Nintendo Switch Pro will use NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling AI technology to upscale gameplay to 4K. The system will also use Samsung OLED displays, giving the handheld greatly improved contrast and color depth. With Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser stating that the Nintendo Switch is only at the midpoint of its life cycle, it makes sense that now is the best time for Nintendo to roll out a premium version of its flagship console as opposed to replacing it with a dedicated Switch 2. Nintendo has neither announced or even confirmed that a Switch Pro console might be inbound, but with rumors continuing to pile up, it's at least worth considering. Here's everything we know about the Switch Pro. And they go on down to talk about all of those things. and A lot of the things we've already talked about, yes. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. the price apparently could be up to four hundred dollars or three ninety nine ninety nine. Not uh, bad, honestly. I'd expect with the PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, the PlayStation, and the Xbox being five hundred dollars consoles, and the Switch being what it is and as popular as it is, and Nintendo being the company they are, I totally would have, would expect a five hundred dollars price tag four ninety nine on that on a Switch Pro, and I would probably even pay a four ninety nine. Price I would. Tag they want just <laughs> shut up, take my money. <laughs> the leak uncovered a project titled Aula. 
So there was a leak inside of uh, some firmware updates in the switch that was data mined. So that uncovered a project name Ola, which indicates that chipset will, will offer higher performances by being pushed to higher clocking speeds, supported by an improved cooling system. Uh, this Twitter user Secrees M, I don't know how to, also hinted that the console will receive a substantial visual upgrade, of course, with the OLED and 4K capabilities and docked, powered by a real tech chip. So there's like even more kind of lower level. Uh, data mining stuff. So there are primary sources to back these things up. I do recall that there was um, a supply line leaker that indicated stuff was being produced. There was uh, an Amazon. There was also an Amazon. Like it came up on the Amazon page, the new <laughs> Nintendo. So like there was a page for it, and that got taken down really quickly. So there's some there's some indications. Again, all this is still in, firmly in the vein of, vein of rumors and speculation, and none of it's been announced properly yet. Um, but again, more and more reports keep coming, corroborating the same information. Mm -hmm. That could just be because there was a supposed, you know, someone made something up and everyone's just kind of rolling with it. You know what I mean? But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. So, um, you know, you know, you know how I've been burned with leaks before in the past. <laughs> Grinch and, leak. Uh, <clears throat> I was going to say, I was going to say, where are the Grinch posters on this leak? Because it could, <laughs> could very well be very, uh, this could be very well another uh, <laughs> Grinch Grinch uh, situation here. I was yeah, because I was about to say like all of these specifics indicate like really concrete stuff that it's going to happen, and there's enough right. to go behind. It. Well, the Grinch was also very concrete and had a uh -huh. lot of so mm -hmm. can't go by that. Right. That's what I mean. Is someone could have made this made up a a you know a, a very credible sounding rumor, um, and then or and possibly even possibly even based on some things that Nintendo was researching. Uh, you know, who knows? Some some bits and pieces, you know, a little bit of truth in the in the lie, and and then we could come E three and no announcement could happen. It's very possible, yep. and in which case, like, we'll all have uh, egg in our face or or whatever, <laughs> just like the Elden Ring community. Yep. Or so. they'll wait till <laughs> after E three and then announce it because <laughs> right. yeah, they're trolls. Sure. No, t makes oh, a good 100%. point in chat. He was talking about E3, uh, wondering if they'll talk about it. And if that's the case, E3 would be the perfect platform to show off the Nintendo right. Direct, new Switch, Breath of the Wild we 2. Know they, yeah, I was going to say, we know they have a Nintendo Direct. We know that the Nintendo Direct is coming. We know that it's highly likely that they will talk something Zelda because it's the 35th anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, so, And there's lots of rumors that multiple Zelda games are going to be announced at E3. So mm -hmm. there's that going with them. So they've got a big E3 coming. This would be the time. If they want to steal E3, That's it. drop it. an upgraded version of their most popular console <laughs> of the yep. last 10 years. And uh, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is the time. So, mm -hmm. All right, cool. We can move on to the next story, which is Sonic Central yeah. happened this week. So there was a so, huge, big, giant, like, Sonic celebration like they're also mm -hmm. having a 30th anniversary celebration it seems like everyone's turning 30 uh so i'm gonna read right from joe scrubble's article over at ign today's sonic central stream has revealed a number of new projects featuring the world's premier blue hedgehog all des designed to tie into the series 30th anniversary celebrations here's everything revealed at the sonic central stream from a new sonic game to full sonic colors remaster so a new game was the first teaser from the sonic team and it's probably where we're gonna hang out the most but sega mm -hmm. announced that its Sonic team, which has previously released Sonic Generations, which was baller, and Sonic Forces, has begun to work well, on a new, yeah, no, on a main Sonic mainline Sonic game. A teaser trailer revealed that the game will arrive in 2022 across all platforms, both last gen and current gen. Uh, no other information was revealed, but the teaser shows Sonic picking up speed in a forest setting, which seems to cause digital effects around him before his trailer trail leaves behind what it looks like a runic symbol. So this is it, like a new mainline Sonic game. And you had an interesting Which, and, idea, like you were uh, laid on me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I said this on the podcast before at some point. I don't know if it was our Sonic episode or if it was our Sega, one of our Sega episodes. I don't remember, but I remember very clearly saying that Sonic needs a Sonic needs a mainline entry that brings the franchise forward in the same way that Breath of the Wild did for Zelda and the same way that Odyssey did for Mario. Like, mm -hmm. something that, like, is... A breakaway hit, nine out of tens, just like, and I don't know what that innovation is. Maybe it's like a big open world Forza Horizon speed racing slash adventure Sonic game. I don't know. Um, like, gosh, could you imagine a Sonic game with the pace and intensity of Returnal? Like, Returnal is a fast-paced action game, and mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that it needs to be 
Sonic Returnal, um, but like with that same level of pace and action, I think would fit Sonic, the Sonic franchise very well. Imagine like dodging and spinning and rolling and jumping oh, man. and hitting robots yeah. and stuff, and it would just be bah. Like that's the kind of like intensity I would love to see from a Sonic game, and the franchise needs it because I haven't enjoyed a mainline Sonic game since like. Sonic Adventure 2. Yep. Um, Funnily and, enough, and... I have Sonic Adventure 2's Metacritic page up on my monitor right now, and it got an 89, which is really yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was an exception. It was an excellent game, and it just because I think partially because it was it came out at that time when Sega was transitioning out of the console wars and into like I just don't think it got the like praise it deserved. It, it didn't get the the um, the franchise adoration that it is that it really deserved and it, you know in some alternate universe out there that was the starting point of an excellent series of sonic you know that 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 was you know when people think mario games now they think the 3d mario games when people think zelda games they think the 3d zelda games when people think sonic games now they get excited for things like the sonic mania which is fine because those are yeah. great games but sonic still is flourishing in its 2d market and its 3d games have really just kind of fallen by the wayside so i really have high hopes for this <laughs> unfortunately i don't have high expectations for this so. yep. it does yeah we'll all that seems like a fair assessment we had we just got pokemon mm-hmm. legends arceus which is now bringing yep. pokemon into that same yes. kind of new yes. breath of something new uh so mm-hmm. yeah i think there's a lot of potential here and sonic the, at least the team has really indicated that they're listening to their fans uh, with Sonic okay. Mania and how that took off. Uh, we got Sonic Forces for free on PlayStation Plus, and while it wasn't the most amazing game, it was nowhere near as bad as some of their later 3D right. franchise entries. So I think mm-hmm. they are listening to their fans. And there was a great reception for the movie, too, with Jim Carrey, and there's a sequel to that right. coming as well. And like, right. that was solid. I wouldn't say it's an amazing movie, but it was solid for like a video game to movie adaptation. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like there's a lot of hype and a lot it looks like a lot of budget and a lot of attention being given to Sonic that has not had that it has not had before. So there's a for lot a while. of while it hasn't had stuff, for years. Including yeah. this cool. this presentation that we're even talking about. Like, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. When do we so, have, when awesome. have we ever had a Sonic direct? Like this is it, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. the next thing that was announced, I'll I'll move on unless you have anything else to add. Nope. Okay, so Sonic Colors Ultimate was revealed. Uh, it's a remaster of the 2010 platformer, which will come to PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC on September 7th. Developed by Blind Squirrel Entertainment, who also did the Mass Effect Legendary Edition remaster that just came out. Uh, the remaster will update the game's look and feel, as well as add new features and a new mode called Rival Rush. I'm actually interested in that, and I kind of wanted to chase down Colors on the Wii, but it's kind of it's not super expensive, but enough to where I don't want to impulse buy it. That looks pretty cool. They did it's... this and Bl- they did sorry, Blind Colors did this and Mass Effect presumably at the same time. Good yeah. for them. Yeah. Like wow, two releases all coming out within um, a few months of each other. That's impressive. I'm mm-hmm. I'm that team. That uh, might be a developer profile right there. Hey. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, the next thing is my second most excited thing about this stream. My first one being the new 2022 Sonic, but this is my second favorite. Oh. Sonic or Sega also announced Sonic Origins. It's a compilation of Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles with Sonic CD, all on, the, on modern consoles with like widescreen support and oh, trophies. Ooh. I can't wait to do another run of Sonic the Hedgehog. I think I have three nice. and Knuckles on the Xbox 360, so I didn't get the PS3 version of it. And I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. it'd be awesome to go get some trophies and some classic Sonic games. It'll be awesome. <laughs> this makes me think I saw a meme recently. Have you seen the meme going around the meme format that was from that crossover episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and New Girl? No. Where, like, um, uh, Andy Sandberg's character, like, stops. Uh, uh, what's her name? Zoe De- <laughs> Deschanel's character. And, like, like, because he's a police officer. He stops her and he's, like, trying to, you know, I need to use your I need you to take me, follow that person or something. And um, And she doesn't trust him. So she says something like, uh, he's, you know, she says something about, I don't trust people who aren't blah, blah, blah fans. And I don't remember what the specific reference was. He, so he goes, oh, I am a blah, blah, blah fan. She goes, oh, yeah, well, name name three blah, blah, blahs. And he goes, and he names them. And then she goes, that's on me. I set the bar too low. That has been memeified. It's going around in a meme. And my favorite one was, he goes, I'm a Sonic fan. She goes, oh, yeah, name three Sonic games. Sonic 1, 2, and 3. That's on me. I set the bar too low. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yep, those are the well, ones know. that started it I, all, man. That's it. It's a total huge tangent. I'm it totally was. sorry about <laughs> that, but it was it was just what was in my head. I needed to say it. I needed to meme. <laughs> vocally, you had to vocally meme. 
I did. I had to vocally read. Uh, to accompany the Sonic Colors remaster, Sega also announced Sonic Colors Rise of the Wisps, a two-part animated series featuring a longtime Sonic voice actor, Roger Craig Smith, who recently departed and then rejoined the role. Caveat, yet another example of them caring about Sonic. They're bringing back mm-hmm. one of the original voice actors. So, like, it's nice. getting... It's, it's a thing. Like, Sonic is becoming a legit entry into stuff now. It's not just spinoffs uh it's but including sonic renaissance <laughs> yeah i'm kind of excited sonic cameos the sonic... renaissance <laughs> <laughs> it has been two whole weeks for you on this show we can tell <laughs> clearly, clearly. <laughs> sonic you will also my... make appearances in two point hospital adding sonic themed items on july 22nd and olympic games tokyo 2020 the official video game with players able to dress their athletes in sonic gear I don't know what Two Point Hospital is, but go dress up as Sonic. Uh, and then Sonic Games on new platforms. Sega announced that Epic Game Store will see the release of Sonic Mania on June 24th. PlayStation Now will receive Sonic Forces, Sonic Mania, and Team Sonic Racing on June 1st. And Amazon Luna will get Sonic Mania and Team Sonic Racing later this year. Uh, there's some mobile games also happening, which we will skip over. And there's a 24-episode Netflix series called Sonic Prime that's coming sometime in 2022. So lots of Sonic news. So it's pretty cool. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's so much Sonic. Um, T-Bone, real quick, since he said it, it's relevant to this, he says, I have high hopes for Colors. I hear Colors and Generations were a few of the good 3D games outside of the Adventure series. So, Generations was um, legit. I love that. I haven't played mm-hmm. Colors, but Generations is awesome. In fact, I was playing yeah. it recently with my son. So, yeah, nice. it's good. All right, next story is uh, some cyber, some more cyberpunk news. It continues. Uh, some more CD Projekt Red continues. The fallout continues even, mm-hmm. what, five months later? Ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, they got a new director of the game. So the previous director of cyberpunk has left, and they have a new director. So what are the details on that? Sure. Liana Rup- Rupert. Liana Rupert over at Game Informer writes, Cyberpunk 2077 has found a new game director in Gabriel Amontangelo. Amontangelo. I can't pronounce these names. Following (laughs) former Quest director uh, Matuez Thomas Schweitz stepping down from his role and leaving CD Projekt Red entirely. The new game director joined up with the studio back in January of 2020. He joined the team as creative director. Uh, for Cyberpunk 2077. Prior to that, he's worked on several major RPG experiences, including Dragon Age, Inquisition's expansions, which did much to tie the base game together, and Star Wars The Old Republic. That's the MMO. Uh, With his RPG background and ability to tie into ongoing story flawlessly, his leadership could mean amazing things for Cyberpunk 2077's future following its chaotic launch. Uh, He'll be leading development charge as Cyberpunk 2077 continues to get into the shape it was promised to be in at launch, as well as the promised DLC for this open-world adventure. Uh, the former game director of Cyberpunk 2077, Adam Badowski, has stepped down from his role to focus on other aspects of game development under CD Projekt Red Umbrella in a different leadership position. With more Cyberpunk experiences on the way and a return to the Witcher franchise, there's plenty of work to be done for the Polish studio. Yikes. So yep. lots, lots of things happening over there at CD Projekt yeah. Red. We just had that story well, I mean, about all the trauma going on with someone who was accused of some problematic behavior that was, ended up being false, but yet he quit, and it changed the culture. Yeah, it's There's a lot of turnover happening. There's, there's right, some PR folks that are also leaving. That have yep, in addition... Yeah, in addition to that, a news story just dropped today from uh, IGN. I, I linked it, so I don't mm-hmm. know if you can see it. But um, basically they said that CD Projekt's Q... Or CD Projekt's Q Q1 2021 net profits oh, yeah. net profits mm-hmm. are down 65% in due to fixing Cyberpunk 2027 2077. So though they do they did make sure to mention so they had a um, investors meeting or whatever recently and um, they did make sure to explain that their cash flow is higher than it's ever been but their net their net profits are down so it's costing it, as we expected it's costing them so much money to try to fix the mess. That was Cyberpunk 2077. 65% net profits down. Whew. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Um, so, anyways. Uh, any thoughts on that? Or did you want to read it? No, I'm just looking. I'm scanning the, for any more tidbits. There's nothing you can really hear to add. It's It really is. Right. The, the problems that CD Projekt Red faced with the release of Cyberpunk 2077 are definitely the, re- the reason why they are down 65% year mm-hmm. over year. Uh, Because this was the launch year for that. So hopefully they can get their stuff together. Because, man, I want want that game to be good. I want it to to fix it. 
they've had so many hits that I'm like, uh, so many, so many not hits. They've had so many um, knocks, I should say, <laughs> that it's 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 time for a comeback for CD Projekt Red. <laughs> yes, but yes, it is. Cool. All right. Um, well, we can move on from all that depressing news and talk about Horizon Forbidden. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't really have a direction for what we're going to talk about here, but I am going to quote the PlayStation blog and just talk about the fact that there was a uh, release this week showcasing mm-hmm. the, the uh, state of play yeah. of for uh, Horizon Forbidden. So I'm so excited I can't even talk. So Ben McCall, the narrative director of Guerrilla, writes, We're excited to share the very first gameplay reveal of Horizon Forbidden West with you on State of Play. This unique episode features 14 minutes of never-before-seen gameplay footage captured directly on the PlayStation 5 console, as well as a quick recap with Horizon's game director, Mathies DeJong himself and myself. Uh, continues... The events of Horizon Zero Dawn six months later. Aloy, a machine hunter, has traveled west to investigate a mysterious and deadly blight in these uncharted lands. Uncharted. She will meet strange new tribes and encounter ever more deadly machines. Together with old friends and new companions, she must brave this dangerous frontier to find the answers she needs to save life on Earth. So there's lots of gameplay footage. What? How do we want to tackle talking about this? We saw a lot. Um, yeah, I'll, a lot. I'll first say that, like, so, uh, for one, I, I had to watch it over a phone while giving Plasma. Uh, I was, uh, uh, I was, the visual, I, I knew going into it not to have high expectations for the visuals because I, you know, not judge it based on the, you know, 720p that my phone was able to stream at any given moment, uh, visuals there. Um that said, it was still impressive visually, but just like everything else so far, everything else that's not been designed exclusively for the PlayStation 5, I've been I, there were some nitpicks I had about the visuals that I was like, okay, clearly we're still dealing with a cross-gen game here. Um, things like her hair clipping through the bow on her back, I was like, okay, like I, I'll forgive that, but you know, I would hope that I would hope that the you know with Unreal 5 rolling out soon and stuff like that, that there would be a uh, there might be some a better rendering of things like that. But uh, otherwise, the visuals otherwise looked gorgeous and better than I expected. They fix a lot of the face jank that is kind of popular. Like, the teeth are always really weird when you're playing Horizon Zero Dawn on the PS4. Yep. Um, and I'm sure that's true in the Pro as well. Just something about the way that they, like, render faces in that game is just kind of weird and uncanny valley. Um, so a lot of that looked fixed in, this, in, the, in the footage that we saw. Um, honestly, in a lot of ways, I thought the gameplay itself looked better than the, um, than the trailer. Uh, a lot of at a lot of points, but they showed off some cool new features of the gameplay, new weapons and stuff like that. Um, the notable ones were they showed off the underwater stuff, which is really cool looking, yeah. beautiful looking. Um, they showed off some new traversal methods, uh, so it's like you were always able to like throw your little hook uh, and repel off of stuff, but now you can like zip line to things, yeah, like directly, mm-hmm. and then like shoot yourself up into the air and. They learned from Breath of the Wild and stole the hang glider idea. Yep. You have this little like hello, like a like a holographic hang glider or whatever that you can like shoot up into the air and then like hang glide. So traversal looks like it's taken a big jump forward in that game. Um, which again, it was them looking at their direct competitor at the time. Breath of the Wild totally outshined Horizon Zero Dawn on launch. So it looks like Guerrilla Games is like, okay, what did this game that was very similar to ours do better than us? And one of the things they, they clearly took away from it was Traversal looks awesome in Forbidden West. Um, and then the other thing that was notable was the awesome glue g- glue grenade or whatever that she threw mm-hmm. at the big... Oh, it looked so cool. Yeah. Um, so that whole fight was just really cool looking. So those are some of the ones that... Oh, and the special attacks... The, like, cinematic, like, when she, like, did that thing and then was like, I was like, yes! So that looked looked like a little jump forward in combat. Um, But those are kind of my takeaways, is they showed off some really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since you addressed all the, like, technical gameplay stuff, I want to talk about a little bit of the narrative direction that I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. In the first game, it was Aloy kind of fumbling into a role that she wasn't even ready for and discovering a lot about herself and her own personal growth and story, and I won't spoil anything for the first game. Go play it. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the second game is now, like, the next iteration where she knows who she is and she's confident in her history. And it was just a little tidbit of how she was interacting with the guy at the beginning beginning uh and then the guys at the end but she had like she hit the little thing on the side of her head and there was a whole map and she was like manipulating this whole thing and like discussing stuff and i just thought wow she's like 
here. She's present and she knows what she's doing. Yeah, yeah. it's not. It's mm-hmm. not like she's learning everything from scratch. Right. So I'm really right. excited to see what kind of other narrative things they bring to the table as far as like tribalism sure. and her role in this world. Um, right. yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how she how she grows too, because yeah. there's sort of a narr- there's a narrative pitfall that comes with sequels, especially when you have a sequel to a game that's already had a character that's had such great character development. Is like okay, well where do we go from here? She's completed a story arc. She's, mm-hmm. she's gone from beginning, middle, end and grown as a person. How do you continue to grow her and deepen her without assassinating her character, without sabotaging her growth yep. um, that she's already had? So hopefully they can, they can navigate that in a way that is um, compelling. So we'll see. Uh, but I'm going to play it anyway. I mean, I'm pretty much sold on it right now. I love the first oh, yeah. game. Like, um, uh, yeah, I was sold on that before they even... Uh, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, so for real. we are over time. It's after our time limit. And the next story is kind of a bit of a bigger topic. It's kind of a meatier one. And I put it there. I didn't really want to dive into it. We can touch on it, maybe revisit it, or maybe we can talk about it in a podcast. So, I don't love Far Cry. I have no love for Far Cry personally. So we can talk. Uh, right, I would I'll say just if go we can do like a quick talk about it. Sure, sure. sure. Right, okay. So, yep. uh, Ubisoft showed off Far Cry Six like gameplay for the first time. It was a big announcement and a trailer and a whole bunch of like cinematics and story. But there was you a can backlash. Pet the alligators. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> oh, there's a backlash. There was a oh, backlash okay, sorry, and there was major controversy. Uh, so much so that Navid Kavari, over uh, he's Far Cry Six's narrative director, has said to the, that the team is not trying to quote make a political statement about what's happening in Cuba. Speaking to the gamer, Kavari said that while he wants Far Cry 6 to feel authentic and pay homage to the guerrilla fighters from around the world and throughout history, the team also doesn't want to make it specifically about the current issues in Cuba or any other real-world location. Quote, the original inspiration was guerrilla warfare, and what is that guerrilla warfare or the guerrilla fantasy, which is obviously tied to revolution. When you talk about guerrillas, you think of the guerrillas in the 1950s and 1960s. We actually went down there to speak to actual guerrilla fighters who fought back then, and we just really fell in love with their stories. But we also fell in love with the culture and the people we've met. When we came out of that, it wasn't that we felt we had to do to Cuba. It wasn't that we felt we had to do Cuba, we realize it's a complicated island and our game doesn't want to make a political statement about what's happening in Cuba specifically. Beyond that, we're drawing inspiration from guerrilla movements around the world and throughout history. For us, it felt like doing the island of Yara would help us tell the story while being very open with our politics and inspiration. This doesn't mean the team plans on pulling its punches in regards to exploring how revolution impacts the people involved and surrounding one. So apparently the, the controversy around it was people were criticizing it for not representing Cuba properly or having it off like bad take. And then, so they responded with that statement. Like, we're not trying to make a political statement with Cuba. So it's going back. And then some people are like, well, why don't you like, Sounds why don't like, you make right, a political statement? Right. Like, let's make a story that actually addresses these things and stop trying to backpedal. So it makes Ubisoft seem cowardly that they're like stepping this back and trying to make it all like PC when, when gamers both want, like gamers want people to just tell the real stories, like make right. make a game that's controversial, and then it goes back to like six days in Fallujah and that whole deal, and so that's kind of the more like this is an iceberg. I'm giving you the tip. So there's a lot more yeah, under yeah. the hood here about what's going on, but I just wanted to highlight that that happened. Sure. I'm extremely excited yeah, about Far Cry. 6. I had no idea. I wasn't even paying attention to any of that discourse. So it's mm-hmm. crazy that it's like it sounds like they've kicked the hornet's nest. Like they decided to. Like, when you're picking the setting for your game, if you specifically aren't trying to make a political statement, then don't set your game in a political hotbed. <laughs> like, like I'm not really familiar with this, with Kurt, Cuba's current political situation, mm-hmm. personally. Uh, that's on me. Uh, I can't know and, and be involved with everything. But now I'm curious to investigate it a little bit more, because I'm curious to see what, in particular... I mean, Cuba's always been a bit complicated, yeah. um, as, far as, a, as far as a region goes. Um so uh, I don't know if that's again. I don't know if this if if the tension is a result of how Cuba's always been, or if there is something more recent that's going on that makes this in particular again still just sounds like a like a okay like when you <laughs> you know it's one thing to for for an American developer to set a game in the Midwest in the Bible Belt, which is what they did with Far Cry Five. They're not American. Um, Oh, they're not. Ubisoft is not American. You're right. You're right. They're French. Yeah. Is the development studio like is the development studio that's leading this game also French? Uh, they have like a. I think it's Montreal. I'm not sure actually. Let's see. Still, it's it's Westerners commenting on, you know, the pinnacle of Western Toronto. civilization. Canada. Toronto. Oh yep. yeah. It's, 
Canadians are perfectly welcome to to. <laughs> Canadians can criticize Middle America all they or uh, uh, Bible Belt America all they want. That's fine. Uh, it's a whole other thing for Canadians in this case to you know be potentially potentially criticizing things that they don't understand about Cuba's situation. So dicey, dicey nonetheless. Ah. Ooh. Don't know how I feel about that. So I'm definitely interested in the story and want to research more. But we are out of time to talk about it here. So <laughs> thank you for uh, indulging sure. us for uh, five minutes longer than we normally do. Actually, yes. this is about the time we normally do these anyway, so it's fine. Uh, so, I do want to give the, the site. I want to cite my source here. It was Adam Bankhurst over at IGN. There's a whole thing called – article is called Far Cry 6 Cuba Political Statement. So if you Google those cool. things, you will find the article that I just quoted. You get some more information. Word. So – all right. Well, thanks to T Bone as always for joining us, keeping us company. Um, so uh, uh, you know, uh, good. To, it's good to have someone chatting with us. Uh, if you want to be like T Bone and be awesome and chat with us, then Termite, where can the listeners who may be watching this later on either Twitch replay or on YouTube, where can they get? Heads us. up is when we're going live and <laughs> learn more about us. 80 bitpodsmashcom That's our landing website. It's got links to all of our social media outlets, all of our podcast platforms, as well as our YouTube channel. You can find all of these videos uploaded to YouTube every single week as we record them, uh, right after we record them. And you can also find link to uh, twitch.tv slash 80 bitpodsmash That's our live channel where we go live every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. on Mondays for a new show, and 8 p.m. on Wednesdays Wednesdays for a gameplay live stream where you can interact with our audience, hit us up, ask us questions, laugh at us, laugh with us, and have a great time. Don't be a weak bone. Be a T-bone. <laughs> Is that a new tagline for our show? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, not <laughs> and with that, we will. But just be like a team boat. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you later this see week. You. Later this week.